started favoring low. I'm trying to keep it upper thoracic, but yeah. So I started getting sucked into the like dot center start pulling, even though I need to start accounting for height overboard. What's up guys, Volger well, here. Welcome to another rainy day here in Washington on the range with the homies and stuff. So right now the guys are gonna be doing some drills while I go ahead and talk about whatever I'm gonna talk about today. Again, just to reiterate it, I'm one of those dudes, I don't like to tell my friends to stop shooting just so I can record a YouTube video. I brought these guys out here to have some fun, it, to train with myself and everybody else that's here. So I'm letting them do their thing, letting them have some fun. There's a bunch of smoke in your face, sorry. So the purpose of today's video is gonna be actually talking about a new, I guess, contender to the market as it pertains to duty holsters or retention style holsters that have the capability to fit a light and a red dot system. That holster today is going to be the Alien Gear Holsters Rapid Force Duty Holster. I know you're thinking, hear me out. So as you know, I'm a huge proponent to the Safari Land style holsters. The level three retention holsters, the level twos, as it again pertains to holding a light and an op and something that's reliable and has stood up to the test of time, as they would say. It was kind of hard for me to actually purchase this thing, so I bought it, um, purchase it with the intent of like, hey, this might be the new, I guess, best thing or another option to the market that's as reliable and with a good name behind it, like Safari Land. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Alien Gears holsters in general. I don't like any of their stuff for concealed carry. But when I saw this, the first time I saw this was actually at um, my police academy. I saw a guy running this and I remember watching it break. It broke. Um, little did I know, uh, after talking to the guy and figuring some stuff out, when it broke, he loosened the screws because he was trying to get a blue gun to fit in here and the blue gun wasn't fitting properly. So he loosened a bunch of screws and then when he put the real gun in it, um, that's when it ended up causing a, a tear. And the tear wasn't necessarily a holster fault, it was the screw in the rear. So that's the only thing I've ever seen with this holster. Other than that, I haven't really seen anybody run it. So comparing the two, when you go onto Alien Gear's website and you actually purchase this holster, um, the options are super easy and they're right in front of your face. You have this uh, pull down of options and it's really simplistic, unlike the Safari Land website. So when you go to the uh, website for Alien Gear holsters, it says, hey, do you wanna put a light, yes or no? That's it. You don't have to do anything else. Unlike with Safari Land, if you were to get the Safari Land holsters on the website, I have to pick a light option, a specific light. When realistically speaking, at least from my experience, I don't work for Safari Land. I've noticed that a TLR1 will fit in here, a Surefire will fit in here. A lot of different lights will fit. But if you pick certain options, all of a sudden you don't have a holster available. And if I change one thing, all of a sudden there's 15 holsters available, even though it'll fit the same, the same gun or like their optic cuts. I fit a Delta put in here, RMR, Aimpoint Acro, any pistol optic that I've had readily available, even the Hollow Suns, 509Ts, 507Ts, whatever, like all that stuff is fitting in this. But sometimes if you pick Acro versus RMR, you'll have different options, even though it's the same cut, right? So here we have this little mount. Uh, the mount's actually pretty decent. So unlike the Safari Land, it's, um, I guess the best way to describe it, it's kind of like the old Black Hawk style uh, belt systems where you kind of like, you don't have to loop it through anything. You just attach it to the belt, tie down some screws and you're good to go. Now the, the cons behind this is that I can't move it around. Like if like I'm sitting in a car or whatever, I want the holster to move, um, pro and con depending on how you want to look at it, right? So then you can also choose to attach their like uh, quick, their quick detach system. Um, so that's what I have here. And that's kind of the only thing that really worried me about the quick detach system specifically, because it's kind of small. And it's very, no, no, no I, I feel like this, because it's such a small surface here, there's more tendencies to break, but so far so good. Haven't really noticed anything with that yet. Um, in terms of holster rigidity. So um, I've had, I had my Lieutenant at work, my chief, um, all my coworkers step on this thing with no gun in the holster and it refuses to come cave on itself. You'll hear like little yeah, cracking, but the holster's not breaking. And then my gun will go in it right afterwards, have no issues at all. It might be just um, like so far I've put multitude of different guns in this thing. And they, um, obviously the only two options that they have is for Glock 19 and Glock 17. The 17 had no problem going in here, same with the 19. So in addition to the belt mount, one thing I definitely did notice is that if you wanted to do this on a Safari Land, there's a reason why there's so many companies making money off the aftermarket products that they have to make to make the Safari Land holster work. Where it comes from the negative camp plate, um, and actually the negative camp plate being the biggest thing. A lot of guys, uh, we're getting the Safari Island holsters where they would have this sitting here and the holster would be canted forward. And it wasn't conducive to a, a very efficient draw. So guys came out with some stuff like the Theory Police, um, 
the black box customs rdr gear came out with a platform that allows you to kind of cant the holster negatively or positively well with the rapid force duty holster with the mounting system included there's three screws in the back you can either do a negative cant positive cant or forward cant or negative positive or neutral cant you can do that so i have it set as a negative cant the uh, the quick detach system again it just it's it kind of reminds you of the g-code system but it's not the same i just pinch these two tabs on the bottom holster pops right up and then also pops right up really easily so no problems there so as the gun sits in the holster, super uh, slim line. The holster is very slim line. Um, it takes a lot of the excess material that a Safari Land holster would have. And another huge thing that I noticed as well, they definitely listen to the end user market. So the biggest complaint with this one, at least me, um, buddy Ryan, buddy Brian, we all sat in a Safari Land meeting and we're like, hey, like these things need to be open at the bottom. Vehicle CQB, your shoot houses, whatever you're doing, training. Um, if when there's no gun in this thing, it acts like a shovel. So all that stuff will get scooped in there. And that's part of the problem that we started to realize. It's like, hey, if there's something in there and you try to put your gun in, you could have a false positive where you think the gun's in there, but it's not, or their gun won't go in at all. And so if your department doesn't allow or your you don't rock a QLS system, you have to physically try to get the crap out of it by flipping the holster upside down. Super annoying. With this, they actually opened up the bottom. So that's another huge plus for me. Um, so now if stuff gets in here, so I did a training the other evening uh, with some buddies at um, another local PD and we were rolling around on the ground, getting this thing wet, getting it dirty and there was no issues at all. Rocks got inside, no problems. It was pure many feet. So now to talk about the actual use of the holster, the functionality behind it. So with the Safari Land level three holsters, you have the SLS, which is a self-locking system and then the ALS. So the issues that we've been running in with this, it's kind of a small platform. So what I usually like to do is I put grip tape right here, some kind of adhesive tape, skateboard tape, so it makes it easier so I have to push it down and I push forward. Then my thumb has to come back and hit the ALS. But again, with practice, you can get it pretty quickly. Um, I've gotten build drills at a 0 0.7, 0 or 1.7, 1.6 with a level three holster. 166. I get shots off under, in sec under a second with this thing as well. So I've, I've definitely put a lot of years into this holster to try to master it and become fast and efficient so I can compete with guys that are running passive or level two holsters. So the guys over at Alien Gear kind of came up with their own fancy name called the Gross Motor Skill Technology or the Gross Motor Skill Draw. Something, don't agree with the name, but it is what it is. But it's actually very efficient. So the uh, this, I guess, not really a paddle, but this push button right here. Once you push that down, it shoots your hood forward. It's not on like a spring where it snaps forward like G-Code and some other companies. So the slower you decide to go with this thing, I'm gonna go slow, oh, yeah, okay, it doesn't work. So the slower I go, the more it goes. So you actually do need to drive it all the way down. Once that's said and done, once you hit that button, all you have to do is swipe your right thumb back and the holster comes right out, or the gun comes right out of the holster. So in that, in essence, it actually is pretty quick. So I've been able to get draws out of this holster faster than I would with the Safari Land more efficiently. Now, don't get me wrong, there are days where I get super lucky with the Safari Land and I could drive down, gun's already out, awesome, but it's not consistent. With this holster specifically, I notice more consistencies of my draw and my efficiency of my draw to get the gun out quickly. So with that being said, I'm not saying that the Rapid Force Duty Holster is better than a Safari Land. I just want you guys to be able to look at it and take it as a different option. Also understanding to make this holster with all the features of this, you have to buy a bunch of additional stuff. And that's where I kind of got annoyed with it. I was able to buy everything right then and there. I don't have to guess what these fancy names are. That's like, oh, what's this S uh, SKU number? that will go with the QLS system. There's different types of QLSs. You might actually accidentally buy a equipment locking system instead of the quick locking system. Um, just in terms of ease of access of going to the website, everything being right there in front of you, picking the options and buying the holster, it's easier to get this than it is this. But in terms of efficiency, I leave that up to you guys and your ability to train. Always go out to the range, do your best to train, um, do the best you guys can to train with the equipment you guys got. 
learn, um, bring your equipment out to the range. If this is something that you carry for work or you do it for fun or whatever the case may be, train with it. You bought it for a reason, bring it out to the range, do the best that you can, learn the equipment, the ins and outs, and just become more of an efficient shooter. Other than that, guys, you have a good rest of the day. Remember, be a dude, don't be a dick. Take it easy.